guys, it's Tries here, and this is an open wheel race car. Instead of making a legitimate F1 car of a V8, V10, etc., I'm going to where no other F1 manufacturer has ever gone before since 1955 by making a V16 engine. You heard that right, so let's build this F1 car. So first things first, with the panel material, like always, especially for the year of 1998 based on the MP4 McLaren type of body that we got going here. So let's give it the best of best by choosing the carbon fiber panel material with a monocoque chassis type made out of carbon fiber also. With a mid longitudinal engine placement in the front and rear suspensions, it's pretty much obvious for this kind of car. Push rod front suspension in the rear, also a push rod. And not only that, let's increase the quality by a plus 15 for mostly everything for the body and maybe a little bit for the engine too. For the engine, like I said, V16 made out of cast iron with the bore, which is kind of interesting. I'm gonna make the bore and stroke based off of the Honda RA16 engine used in the MP4 McLaren. So imagine this were to be a V8, the bore would have been set at a 79 millimeters, and the stroke would be set at a 50.8 millimeters, which gets the engine size weight as a V6 engine, which gets the engine size to about 1.5 liters. But since it's a V16, going from a 1.5 liter engine to a V16, about a 4 liter engine. That's a huge difference right there, folks, about two and a half times difference. And we're going to be using a dual overhead cam 4 valve made out of aluminum. So for the crank count rods and pistons, we're giving the best materials as possible because we're going to rev this bad boy pretty high. So build steel crankshaft, lightweight forged uh, count rods, regular forged pistons, and maybe a harmonic damper, but I don't think we really need it. For the compression, start off with around a 12.0 to 1 ratio to high setting right here. Jump to cam profile. Same thing for the springs quite a bit. And the RPM element, let's try this out. 12,000 RPM. And the fuel system, we're going to be using a multi-point electronic fuel injector with a throttle per cylinder configuration with some race intake manifolds. And for the fuel type, let's choose the good old ultimate. And lastly, for the exhaust everything, so headers, let's start off some tubular racing headers with a dual exhaust, the exhaust diameter, let's do 3 inches for now, know everything, and valve flow. I'm about to increase the springs a little bit. Alright, let's try quality spamming this bad boy without increasing the heads and valves, all good stuff, so around 492. That's more like it. So even though the Honda engine, the RE18 in real life, makes around like 900 horsepower once used in the MP4, so we're almost at 700 horsepower as I tune this bad boy a little bit more. So a 10.8 compression ratio, what if I put some VBT in this bad boy just as like a buffer? Like buff the performance, so around 717, all cams. 731, but let's just do intake only because the quality, well, it does increase a bit, but not a whole lot up in here. So increasing the quality slider of this freaking fuel system that we got here, so let's make it around 800 horsepower. Tune this a little bit, make it exactly 800. I think right around 800.1 will do, so we get the final horsepower rating right here of 800.1 horsepower at 11,700 RPM at the torque at 361.7 pounds feet of torque at 11,500 RPM. So let's see what this 4 liter V16 revving at a freaking 12,000 RPM sounds like right here. Yeah, frickin' idling. Damn, this thing sounds pretty can. Is it maxed out? Did they max this out? Uh, yeah, the cam profile is maxed out, so damn, that sounds brutal. And you pretty much already know about the drive type for this bad, but it's first of all high the chassis yet again. So rear drive of a manual 5-speed. Sucks like I could do a 6-speeder up in here. So top speed, how fast? 277 miles per hour. Why not? For the tires, I did this with my test build, but this was for an inline 5 engine. So semi-slick tires. Let's do the front. I think I set these to a uh, 285 and max these 395s in the back with some 13-inch rims or 13s made out of uh, alloy rim material. And the brakes right here, even though they're not going to be the world's best at everything, so max them out, Venetus 4 piston, max this out again, mostly a racing pad type, maybe around an 80 I set that to. The under tray, well, what's this imagine? Well, we do kind of got an under tray going up here, but it's not the world's best, so sport under tray, a 30 on the brake, airflow a 35, so we can get this thing cooled down in between braking zones and all that good stuff, so for the interior, you know it, one seater, 
basic interior and all the way down to the none setting so no entertainment whatsoever the steering let's go balls deep and choose the manual rack and pinion steering with no traction aids whatsoever so no abs brakes no traction control or abs brakes none of that whatsoever and the safety you know it at a none setting and finally for the suspension so let's choose the standard springs with twin tube dampers and a passive sway bar let's start off with a racing preset where are we at right now it's gonna do some oversteering even though we're gonna put some aerodynamics in this bad boy to compensate some of this but it's oversteering right now slam this even more where are we at now better or worse i don't know so despite having a 4 liter V16 engine, our current MPG rating is around 17 US miles per gallon of a top speed of 272 miles per hour to z the uh, top speed graph right here, of an estimated 0 to 62 in about 3.2 seconds, 3.2 exactly, wow. So what happens if I do get a time going at the automation test track? It's probably going to be under 2 minutes. Let's see here. This is no downforce whatsoever. 2 minutes, 1 second, 90 milliseconds. At the quote-unquote Top Gear test track, a.k.a. the airfield. I'm guessing like a 110. A 112.92. Damn, not that bad. So right about now, let's get ready to design this here bad boy in a time lapse. We're designing this entire Formula 1 car to get ready to export this bad boy to BMG Drive. So let's commence the time lapse of the build right now. So for the design of this car, it was quite easy adding the front and rear wings of this dangerous F1 car. I'd say the exterior design took me a total of 30 minutes for me to complete. So as you see with me building the interior, I added a handful of analog gauges from the speedometer, tachometer, fuel level, oil pressure, and engine temperature, along with a racing seat, steering wheel, racing pedals, and hastily placed a gear shifter close to the seat. I then added the side vents, mirrors, and a fuel cap on the right side. For the paint job, I struggled with getting a color picked out for this car, so I decided to replicate the MP4's white and red pattern. I also decided to add a driver using the crash test dummy fixture mod inside the car. So it's not like a ghost is driving the car in Beam&G. Now for delivery, I added a bunch of parody and fictional brands all over the car. From the front wing, the sides, near the cockpit, the top, the rear wing, and on the very back. I also had the car's number, which is the three zeros. That's to honor my old channel, the Mr. Jack and Triple Zero, which got nuked by YouTube in early 2021. After that, I slightly tuned the engine to 805 horsepower and made some final adjustments to the suspension of the car. So after getting everything done with this build, here's what it came out. This is the 1988 Macmillan MCM-16. This V16 Formula 1 car serves as a concept race car to see if this 4-liter V16 engine is capable of tackling any racetrack, even though it takes place during the V6 Turbo era when engines were a lot smaller than this guy right here. Alright, so I finally got this here F1 car from the 1980s with a V16 engine all set and done. Took quite a while to get the sponsorships in place, but not so much on the general design of this here car. So before we export this bad boy to BMG Drive, despite our only problems that we see right here, such as the quality issues, the tendency to oversteer, more oversteering, damper speed too hard for the front and back, brake fade, wheel spit issues, semi slick tires, front camera being too high, wheel spit issues, the front tires being quite wide, the rear tires being quite wide, and some unutilized octane for the engine, let's jump in to BMG Drive to see how this wannabe F1 car performs. So here we are at the map of West Coast USA with the street illegal race car that we got going here right at the pretty much the start of the highway portion of the map here and Japanese freaking widgeon. So anyways, let's get started here by doing our base performance test with this here vehicle. So first things first, we're gonna start with the 0 to 62 acceleration test, followed by the 62 to 0 brake test, and lastly, a top speed run with this vehicle. So let's start off with our 0 to 62 test. Let's rev this up and go. First, here we go. Oh my god, the freaking tires were going mental! 0 to 62 in 3.11 seconds of 151.78 feet. So let me restart real quick so I can do the brake test. Alright, 62 miles an hour, mash the brakes. Now, no ABS. But we come to a stop at 62 to 0, 2.02 seconds of 76.01 feet, so... <laughs> 
I was uh, kind of right and wrong about the brakes. I was right about being very quick, but I was expecting some brake fade later down the road once you jumped this thing into a time trial run, and you missed me, Mr. Gavril. So for a top speed run already defect, I had to go a little bit slow through the toll booth because- Get out of the way, dude! So I had to go slow through the toll booth in case I crash out up in here, so we're going it's over 200 miles an hour right now. This is what we can set you right here on, on wheel right here. Frickin' Thrustmaster T-150 wheel up in here. 215. Coming up to the bend up here to the exit ramp. Before the exit ramp, you had to get off under steering. Jesus Christ. Major under steering, I don't care anymore. Manage broken. Well, it uh died up in here. I was about to say we couldn't get the top speed no matter what. So 215 miles an hour was the top speed we got before we crashed ourselves up into the tunnel here. And a raid siren, hold up, boy. Arrest me. I'm dead. You missed! <laughs> you missed! You suck, boy! Okay, he's gonna turn around. Let's let's, let's jump to a time chart right now before he apprehends me right now. So here we are at the bottom map of Road Atlanta. I thought about going to the Monaco circuit, but since it's too tight for this type of car, being a V16 with a lot of wheel spin, I said, nah, maybe next time. Maybe for a more controllable car like a V8 or a V6 or something like that. So we're we'll gonna be doing two laps around this here racetrack in the noon hour, so let's get ready to start here for the start finish line in three, two, one. 6,000 RPM launch. Look at the back, dude, look at the back tires jiggling. Look at that. <laughs> So the first quarter we go, I kind of forgot about the layout. All along I forgot about the layout. It was like, there goes the front wing, so it took me... I don't say it took me, it's been several months since I've been on this track. Sorry about that. In the first corner, immediate oversteer. It showed some oversteer, but Jesus Christ, I thought different. Yo, this damn thing is so uncontrolled. Now there goes the rear wing. Uh, what was that? Alright, 80-something miles an hour. This is pretty much just take it slow. It, it's, it's like a... Death trap up in here, folks. I'll say, take it slow next time. Make sure we're not gonna get too ahead of ourselves later down the road. See, the problem with this car is, is I I can't for it. Here we can for it, but we got this little quarter bed, so it start breaking now. 140 miles an hour, pump a little bit, and just take it slowly, like you're just. Oh, well, got somebody to pass your seat a Formula One car. Lock up the brakes because I screwed up. I always say, with this car, you have to pretty much shift up, shift early, and be very careful on it. Though, like, super duper careful because we got no traction aids whatsoever. So there's a high speed rod going. I'm concerned. Okay, 170. Start the brake, start the brake. Pop a little bit. Steer in. A simple steer in, it wouldn't work. That's dumb. Despite that, our first lap time is a two minutes, one second, 106 milliseconds. We could do better, yeah. Locked up the back tires and proceeds to oversteer. This car really sucks at handling. Kids, this is why you don't put a V16 in a McLaren MP44 type of we're gonna get stuck here, type of fork type of car. Even on a steering wheel, I'll probably have a ton of problems on a PS4 controller. It's just no difference driving with a steering wheel or the controller. This, this car handles horribly. Let's end this off. Wiped out big time. 2 minutes 24 seconds, 109 milliseconds, which gets our total time to 4 minutes 25 seconds, 250 milliseconds. I don't know where to start, but this car handles horribly. Even though these are realistic tires, I probably could have made these thinner up front, but it doesn't really make a difference having a heavy V16 in the back like that. All right, free roam, crash this out. Uh, main menu. Damn it, main menu, you gotta buy way. So main engine is broken. We got a severe front end crash with this here vehicle. So as you can see here, that tire is spinning and we got a big mess with this here car. So for the final part of the video, let's jump into the free room section here and drop this bad boy down to Brutal Slope to see if this V16F1 car is brutal to handle down a simple slope. So take it to the top of the ramp right now. So here we are at the top of the ramp here facing our doom right down below. So let's get ready to accelerate this bad boy. What's up? Uh, whoops, those photos on the brakes. So go to arcade mode, accelerate, and I... Can I please stay on the... Oh my god. Oh my god, please! Alright, here we go. Fourth gear into fifth gear. God damn, this car sucks. I mean, it's fast, but you can't drive on a straight line. Top speed we go. 282 on the bottom of the ramp. 
stay straight. 215 of a launch, so let's get ready to... Let me double check my buttons. It's the other button. Okay, so here we go, flying upside down. Here's my force feedback, if you can hear. Stop. How will my force feedback behave once I slow this down? All right, here's the card frame. Let's get ready to unfreeze the physics at 50 times slow-mo, so here we go. Here comes the rear. Damn, loose polygons on the rear right there, so there goes the rest of the rear wing, and the car is completely in shambles, as you could see right here. So go to regular camera, and full time. My wheel is having a seizure.com. So the car, did our driver survive? Let's see, where's my driver? So it looks like our driver, oh boy, um, he kind of did, but it looks like, oh no, his, his, his legs are bending upward. Uh, I'd say this is going to be a no. Well, he may survive, but he'll probably be paralyzed for the rest of his life with that here collision. Hey, look, look, my engine's exposed. That's cool. All right, so for the last part of the video, accelerate this bad boy and get this aligned the best I can to crash ourselves at the square block way down there, a.k.a. the wedge thing, so I can get an interesting wedge-shaped look of the vehicle. But we're off to a great start. All right, here we go. We're in a straight line, ample acceleration, 200 miles an hour, forward a little bit more, keep going. Here we go, all the way down, 250. The steering's getting a little janky, and stop! 270, right here, with major amount of wheel spin, so let's slow this bad boy down, get a camera going right now. Alright, 100 times slow-mo in effect, here is the car, here is the wall, what is gonna happen? So here comes the wing, the tires, the driver, the rest of the car, coming to a rest. There goes my triple zero, freaking number right there, and honoring my old YouTube channel that went oof, over a year ago, so here comes the car coming back, full time. More seizure steering wheel moments as the force feedback does its freaking job by the for the rear wing coming in place and the car being like that. All right, let's kick this guy over here and beat you to the bottom of the ramp to do an aftermath destruction vehicle before we wrap this up. All right, the car is coming to a rest. The engine is about to produce a freaking jitsu type of stuff, but it has stopped, which is fortunate. So the rest of the car with that high speed impact and well too close, buddy. So for such a high speed impact. We still got some of the sponsors intact, some of the loose polygons of the Formula 1 car all exposed and sharp and everything and looking elsewhere, even underneath through the ground, to the top or wherever. It's a freaking scrap pile, a hunk of mess that we got going here. I can't really explain further about this kind of mess right here. So that'll do it with automation and BMG drive with the Macmillan MCM16. You see why there hasn't been a V16 F1 car since the 1950s. Not only that it's powerful making over 800 horsepower, but it also oversteers like crazy no matter how fast you're going. Even if I were driving this car on a controller, I would have the same struggles as I did on my wheel. And for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss out on any videos like this in the future. And also, check out my social media down in the description below. So this is Tries rising up, and signing out.